spiritual songs. These things come from your spirit. See, they come from the prophetic gift that God has given you. And that's why the Lord says for us to desire spiritual gifts. And most of all, that we may prophesy. Because through prophecy, we can admonish one another. We can strengthen one another. The body of Christ is strengthened through the prophetic ministry. Hallelujah. Now, that's not the same thing as um, everyone being a prophet. He didn't say that we should desire to be prophets. No. He said desire to prophesy. The gift of prophecy and being a prophet are two different things. The two different things. And even the ministry of a prophet is of diverse nature. The, uh, all prophets are not the same. You see, they're very different. You study the Bible and look at the different prophets in the Bible. The ministries are very different. See, so even if you were, were a prophet, uh, the ministry that God gives you may be very different from... Another one, not the same. And if you were a pastor, you probably would not have exactly the same focus as another pastor. There are differences. Hallelujah. There are differences. But it's good for us to know those areas in which God uses us and to strengthen them. One of the things that I've found in ministry is that um, if you're not, if you're not, careful to watch whatever God gives you, you can lose it. You see? Not because God will take it. No. It just goes away from you. You, you kind of uh, lose a, a grip of it. Anything that God gives you, it's important that it is used. It wasn't given for you to uh, hide it and just pray over it. Or just acknowledge that you do have something. And you're supposed to use it. But you see, you don't just get up to use it any way. And every way. No. There are different kinds of meetings and opportunities. You have to wait for the right moment. For the right place. Otherwise, it will be an abuse of spiritual power. It has to be used right. Hallelujah. It's got to be used right. Amen. Amen. Do you have the gift of prophecy? And Bible says you may all prophesy and that by course, which means every one of us could have the gift of prophecy. And if we had enough time, the whole church could prophesy one by one. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. But it didn't say the whole church should lay hands on people one by one. You understand? He refers to the gift of prophecy. He doesn't say the whole church could, could give word of wisdom or word of knowledge one by one. No, it didn't say that. It didn't say that. He didn't say the whole church could go ahead and, and minister healing one by one. No, it didn't say that. He didn't even say that the whole church could, could go ahead and minister the gifts of the Spirit one by one. He didn't say that. He was specific about the gift of prophecy. And then he told us what the gift of prophecy should be used for. For edification, exhortation, and comfort. Never for condemnation. Never for condemnation. And then, the only time it is used in judging the spirit of a man is when the non-Christian, that's what the Bible says, when the non-Christian comes into your midst, he says, through the gift of prophecy, he can be identified. One who doesn't believe. Not a Christian who has a problem. Did you hear that? You know, when the gifts are used correctly, God is glorified. And the church will grow. But if you use the gift of prophecy wrongly, instead of the church growing, people will believe in the church. You'll be surprised. How can the manifestation of the Spirit be driving people away from your church? But I mean, something is wrong. And it's one of the things that I've found among a lot of people who are gifted with so many beautiful things. 
The gift, how can the gift of the Spirit in your life reduce the people that are coming to your church? How could it be? It must mean that there is a wrong application of the gifts of God. Hallelujah. You still there? Glory. In Zechariah chapter 10, verse number 1, it says, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. And the Lord shall make what? Bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Everybody can be blessed. Hallelujah. Ask of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. What does mean latter rain? He says the latter rain. Which means he's talking about the time before the harvest. Because there is the early rain and there is the latter rain. The early rain is the rain before seed time. Okay? And then the latter rain is the rain before harvest. And so he says... Before the harvest fields of the world, before the master comes back for his church, there's going to be an outpouring. It's so important, so significant about the terms that are used about the Spirit. You remember when you read in Joel chapter 2 from verse 28, tells us, the last day he said, God, I'll pour out my Spirit. You know, I likens it to water. I'll pour out my Spirit. In the house of Cornelius, the Roman centurion, the Bible says the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell. Hallelujah. Like the rain. So there is talking about the Spirit. The Spirit of God. And, and we've discussed certain things through the years about uh, the anointing that's within you when you receive the Holy Spirit to live in you. And the anointing of God that is upon God's calling on your life. Same Spirit, but two different operations. Same Spirit who lives in you, puts an anointing on your life for what is called you to do. Now you can understand why, even though you have the Holy Spirit, you could function in the calling of God in your life to a lesser or to a more degree, depending on how much of that unction, that anointing is on your life for your calling for that thing that God has called you to do. So you could really enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit inside you and know nothing about increasing the anointing on you for the things that he's called you to do. And so you've got to learn that. So, for the anointing of God that is in you, because the Bible says you have an unction from the Holy One. It says there's an anointing. See, you have an anointing from God. It's in you. And that anointing leads you. That anointing guides you. But there is an anointing to empower you for the things that God has called you to do. Making your work so different. Increasing the authority in your life. And you have to know how to work with the Spirit of God for the increase of that anointing. If you're faithful, it will increase. You've got to be faithful. You see, for the Spirit within you, there's no increase necessary. Because that's the whole Holy Ghost living inside you. He lives in you. And you can be filled again and, and again. Be filled again and again. You can be more full than filled. That's why you can't increase it. You just, you just get full. And when you're full, that's it. It'll start coming out of your mouth. <laughs> they were filled with the Spirit of God. What happened? They spoke the Word of God with boldness. See? You can't increase that one. But the one on your life, your calling and ministry, okay, can be increased. Okay, um, 
dear Lord. You're still here? You sure? Okay, take a look at Psalm 92. Psalm 92 and um, verse 10. It says, but my horn shall thou exalt. Now, horn is symbolic of authority in prophetic language. It means power, authority. Okay? That's what it means. But my horn shall thou exalt. You're going to exalt, lift my horn. It means that my authority is going to be increased. Like the horn of a unicorn, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Uh, that's another play on words. You see, it is not the freshness of the oil. He's not dealing with the freshness of the oil. He's dealing with the fact that he's been anointed afresh with oil. You see, you understand poetry. And you'll see a lot of that in, in prophecy. And this great man of God, full of the spirit, he was a singer, he was a poet, and he was a prophet. Hallelujah. So he says, but my horn shall thou exhort like the horn of an unicorn. I shall be anointed afresh with oil. I shall be anointed afresh. So he's dealing here with a fresh anointing. He's talking about being anointed again. And David, if anybody knew about this stuff, it should have been David. David had three great anointings come on his life. First, he was anointed in the midst of his brethren. Then he was anointed in Judah. Then he was anointed over all Israel. See that? So he had these three anointings. As his horn was exalted. Glory to God. So you see, David was called to be king of Israel. But he was anointed in the midst of his brethren. Until the time came when a new anointing had to be brought upon him. And Judah came under him. Until all Israel came to him and he was anointed again. So sometimes, you see, you, you, you want to do more. You want to do more in your street, in your area, in your city, in your town, in your nation, in your region. There's an, an anointing that needs to be increased. Until that is done, the one with which you operate will not go beyond what it is supposed to do. There's an authority given to you. That authority must be increased. And that's why you require faithfulness. If you're faithful in the one that he has given to you, then he will cause a new anointing to come on you. Hallelujah. He'll cause a new anointing to come on you. If you could not pray and intercede and be prayerful for 50 members, who will commit into your hands 150? When you were not praying and watching over 50? You see what I mean? And that's why you can have 3,000 people come to your church as first timers throughout the year. And at the end of the year, you retain 10. Why? Because the anointing cannot be increased without faithfulness. You can command it to come. It will not come by commanding it. You can't pray it upon you. No. You have to walk in it. You have to walk in it. You have to walk in it. Okay. Uh, let's let's um, go on in our communication through the Spirit. You know, we've got communication through the Spirit. Amen? Amen. 